Grading the New Orleans Saints is off season. So we have graded the Saints draft, but now that we have the full picture of what the Saints are going to do in the off season, and now we're heading straight to the 2024 NFL season, we are here with PFF Pro Football Focus, and we're going to grade the Saints off season. Well, they're going to grade the Saints off season, and Shaboy, me, the superstar, face of the franchise, is going to react. All right, we're on to the New Orleans Saints. Trevor's going B plus for the Saints off season. I think <clears throat> move for move, it's not a bad. B plus is fine. I'm cool with B plus. Uh, I'm thinking of it as impactful on this season. So, so like the Spencer Rattler stuff and all of that, that is cool. But that's going to be something we'll see down the road. It's not going to impact this season. So that's why I took the grade from the draft away from an A plus because some of the great things that happened in the draft we will not see. That will not bear fruit until. A couple seasons down the road. So this season is what I'm going to be talking about. I like B plus. I like that grade because of what we did roster wise, where we upgraded roster wise, which is we addressed our biggest needs, and that's all you can ask a team to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you ask them what you know. Here's our biggest needs. Address it. Our biggest needs, in no order, offensive coaching staff, full overhaul. Full new, nothing similar, nothing the same. Ronald Curry, see ya. Pete Carmichael, see ya. Out of out of house. We're not even promoting from within. Whole new group of guys, all young, innovative. You know, Clint Kubiak, Andrew Janoko, and new innovative system. So it's not we're doing the same thing. It's not we're keeping the same culture. It's none of that stuff. Complete offensive overhaul. All right. So they listened. Next. Hey, we can't rush the passer. Okay, well, we're going to get Chase Young. Chase Young, boom. Say what you want. We'll see what happens. I mean, all these players will be, we'll see what happens. But they did address it. They went and got Chase Young. Next, our offensive line is horrific, is terrible. All right, we'll draft Talise Fuaga with the 14th overall pick. So when you see all that, okay, you have to say tip of the cap, thank you. Thank you for addressing what our biggest problems were. Will it work out? Like, will it all be great? That's, that's results. We can't just, we can't be married to just the results. Okay. The philosophy, the idea, the planning, the strategy, all that stuff is sound. I'm a big fan of it. If you look at the rest of the moves, releasing Marcus May, extending Tyran Matthew, uh, Alexander Horvath, Willie Gay, good signing. Michael Thomas gone, salary cap issues and locker room issues. Nathan Peterman, irrelevant. Uh, Stanley Morgan, <clears throat> sounds like he's going to be providing insurance or something. I mean, very, very regal name. That offseason for the Saints, I think the 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 uneasy feeling mm -hmm. that I have for New Orleans is uncertainty around Ryan Ramchak at tackle, maybe yeah. having to go into the draft, drafting a tackle, which they did in the first round. Talise Fuwanga coming in, liked that as a move. Do they have enough on both sides of the ball to improve? Like, that's that's a... And we've talked about this a little bit. They have to improve on on just the baseline, like how you're looking at this season. You have to say that they're entering this season better than they ended last season, which is all you can ask a team to do in, in the offseason is, hey, take a look at where we were at the end of last season. And make it better. Like, give us a better chance. Give us a better roster. Give us a better scheme, however you want to phrase it. The Saints did that. We took a look. If you look at the last week of the season and you look at the first week of the upcoming season, which situation is better? It's no arguing about it. It is this season. It is the one right now. It is the 2024 NFL season because of the new coaching staff, the new philosophy, the new scheme, the new strategy. You know, young uh, Talise Fuaga, we, we got younger on the, on the offensive line. Even if the offensive line didn't get better, because even if you say, well, we're trading Ryan Ramchek for Talise Fuaga, which isn't even totally true because Ryan Ramchek obviously wasn't full strength in playing last year. But even if you say it's just a one-for-one -one switch, we took a health issue, a health variable, replaced it with a young, could-be keystone at a very important position. So even that philosophy is a bonus for uh, the offensive line. Same with Chase Young, where... Will Chase Young be great? Who the hell knows? But I know he's a 24-year-old, former second overall pick. He's shown signs of being good in the past. We could not rush the passer at all. It's a low-risk, high-reward play. 
And to be able to do all this while managing the salary cap, where, remember guys, first thing we heard going into the offseason was that the Saints were in salary cap hell. So to do all this, to get a B-plus, to address every single need while dealing with the salary cap, very impressive. I don't know, but I did really like the Saints draft with Fawanga in the first, Kool-Aid McKinstry in the second, and then fifth rounder, Spencer Rattler, taking a flyer on him to back up Derek Carr. Yeah, no, I think that was a really nice draft. Um, yeah. I think they did a really good job. No doubt. The draft, no doubt. Like Everyone, critics, pundits, fans, whoever, has all lauded the draft. Again, I think there's a difference between the draft being good because of value and then the draft being good because it's going to have an immediate impact. Spencer Rattler was an insane value play. I mean, it could have been, arguably could have been a second round pick, could have been a third round pick. We get him, you know, 70 spots after where he probably should have went. But we will not see the we will not see that next season. So when you're talking about the draft and you're talking about where we'll actually see these players, more than likely we'll only see Talise Fuaga, uh, Kool Aid McKinstry maybe Bub Means, and you might be saying, oh, no, Bub Means can do this, this, and this. Well, remember, the San Francisco 49ers and Clint Kubiak, they run three wide receiver sets, the second least in the NFL. So if you're thinking, oh, Bub Means can be out there on our four wide receiver sets, on our three wide receiver sets, on our five wide receiver empty set uh, plays, we don't do that. We're not going to do that. So that's not to say that we'll never have three wide receivers out there or we'll never have four wide receivers out there. But if that's your if that's your thinking, your thinking is like we're gonna spread the field and do all this, I would I would behoove you into going back and looking at the percentage of sets that the 49ers ran last year and the sets that Clint Kubiak ran in at his time as an office coordinator. So it'll be very tight end running back multiple running backs on the field, tight end driven offense is how we're is how we're gonna operate. So that's why I say Bub means might get, be impactful. Jalen Ford is supposed, supposed to be a special teams player to start. And then after this season, I think he's going to have a chance to play a linebacker. Uh, Boyd and Azirum will both have be developmental players. I'd be shocked if we saw them make any kind of impact. So really you're looking at Fuaga, McKinstry, possibly means uh, impacting the Saints this season from an A-plus draft or an A draft. So you got to kind of look at it two different ways. You know, the future and then immediate. They're the great, don't forget, Bub Means in the fifth round. Your guy, Bub. Uh, <laughs> that'll help replace Michael the, Thomas. The next Devery Henderson, as I said. Yeah, yeah. Um, Saints. And then, you know, they've they had some offseason losses, but they were guys that made sense to let go. I mean, Jameis Winston, yeah. backup quarterback there. Andres Pete, who's been problematic more than he's been a positive for them yep. during most of his time there. Michael Thomas, who just isn't the same player that he was before all the injuries. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, you look at those, you look at who we lost – and you look at the impact versus some of the problems, whether the problems are salary cap, whether the problems are injuries, whether the problems are locker room or, you know, whatever. Like, if you look at all that, we really didn't lose much. So when you, com when you com uh, compare, like, losing not that much with gaining something at problematic positions, that, that comes out as a win. Like, if that's an easy one plus one is two. That's an easy algorithm to success where – we got under the cap. We got rid of some players that were, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say dragging us down, but kind of dragging us down. We got rid of those players. We got younger. We took some chances on some high reward players. Yeah, I, I love the offseason. Uh, I, I like what it means. I like what it means for the chapter and the vision and all that. The vision is obvious. And the vision is that the front office heard us. They heard the Saints. They heard the fans. They heard the Saints fans say, Look, we got to do something different. We have to evolve. We have to innovate. We can't be stuck in this cosplaying Sean Payton, Drew Brees world. And they said, okay. And and I give Mickey Loomis a lot of credit for that. Mickey Loomis, it's tough to admit when you're wrong. And for Mickey to say, I was completely wrong on the idea that we could keep things in house. Like, think about that change, all right? Think about how different it is that Mickey Loomis, before last season, so when he was saying that Pete Carmichael was his guy, that Ronald Curry was his guy, and that Dennis Allen was his guy, and all this other stuff, he was saying that we're not going to change things. We're going to keep the same core philosophy and vision. We're going to keep all that in-house. We have the guys who can win here. Remember, he said that multiple times on interviews. We have the guys who can figure it out in the house. 
15 weeks later, he says, LOL, we're actually going to get rid of the entire house. We're going to bring in all new ideas. We're going to bring in all new philosophies and visions and styles. We're going to completely forget, completely forget what we were doing. Oh, and the quarterback we drafted for the future is nothing like the Drew Brees, Ian Book, Trevor Simeon, Andy Dalton clones that we had for the last couple of seasons. So will it work? Different story over a different day. We won't know that until for a few years. But you got to admit, the actual idea is, you know, is, is very, very good and should be celebrated. And then they made some additions. Um, you know, Willie Gay, I think, is still a really talented coverage type of linebacker. Chase Young, they've taken the Chase Young gamble, you know, brought him in to try and, and get the best out of him. Yeah. And the best out of him is still, like, really high end. I'm for yes, all this. Yes, this, Absolutely. The, if you get the best out of Chase Young, you're talking about a really high-end, double-digit sack, 24-year-old. The ceiling is crazy high with Chase Young. And that's another thing you got to remember with all these players for the Saints, where let's say Chase Young doesn't work out. Okay, cool. It's just a complete, like, they just counterbalance each other because we weren't doing nothing last year. So we don't need to get, like, Chase Young isn't replacing a guy who gave us 10 sacks last year. You could, you could go to Lowe's, get a mailbox, put it over at right end, and we're going to get the same production we got last year. So it's just such low risk with such high reward. Really a steal, and especially with the contract is so incentive-based that the injury doesn't even matter. Because if he doesn't play, he's not getting paid. So if he doesn't play, it turns into like a one-year, $2.5 million contract. And if he does play really well, you have a chance to extend a guy, and boom, you just locked up a 24-year-old edge rusher. Chase Excellent. Young gambles for sure. So I, I do like that move by the by the Saints. Yeah. They need some of their younger defensive linemen still to step up. But Chase Young. Yeah, for sure. How Granderson does look solid for, for the Saints. Again, they're, they're not in a position to make a ton of flashy moves, right? right. They're always 100%. restructuring and, and, you know, letting veterans walk because of uh, cap issues. Marshawn Lattimore could be the next guy that, you're, that you might see out the door, but you've got Kool-Aid McKinstry as a you know guy that is there to replace him so again i don't know if the saints are much better than they were last year it you know th there's those questions on the offensive line that need to be solved um the offensive line as a as a totality still feels like a problem yeah it is it is a problem no doubt about it saying the offensive line at in totality is absolutely a weakness and absolutely a problem and we you know i would assume we're going to continually address that moving forward did what we could this year with uh, Talise Fuaga. So, yeah, it is a problem. I'm not going to sit here and you know say it. No, 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 we're good. It's going to be fine. It will still be a problem. It'll be a problem all season. The good thing about Clint Kubiak's offense and San Francisco's offense is it does take a lot of the pressure off of the offensive line because it's so quick. It's so fast. It's so much uh, pre-snap motion to, to see matchups and to do all that stuff. So you, it's not going to be like Derek Carr is dropping back and they got to hold the line for five seconds. It's going to be very different. I think they did okay with what they had, though. Yeah, yeah, agreed. As far as resources go, yeah, and they're still sitting in an N NFC South. I know the the Bucks stepped up and looked like a pretty good team down the stretch, but it still looks like a very winnable NFC South. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, the Bucks stepped up and looked like a good team down the stretch, who we absolutely rolled. <laughs> you got to remember, I agree with them. The Bucks did step up and the Bucks did look good towards the end of the season. They beat the Eagles. And then when we played them in Tampa Bay, we beat the holy hell out of them. So same with the Falcons, where a lot of people are saying, well, I mean, the Falcons got Kirk Cousins to the other is different. But the idea that all these teams like all these teams took a step forward to everybody, but no one is willing to say the Saints took a step forward, even though at the end of the season we were beating those teams, we were playing at a high level. And we did address the problem. So it is it is it is an interesting situation because I'm I'm so positive about the future of this team. I'm so positive about the vision of this team, especially when compared to the rest of the NFC South. But I still am within reason that I think this team will win somewhere between seven, eight, nine, ten games. You know, so and you do kind of have to be in the middle there. It, it is you do have to do the the breakdown and, and figure out what actually is happening but then keep it in a realistic world. It wouldn't be realistic. 
And I wouldn't be doing you justice, honestly, if I came out here, said all this, and said, yeah, we're a 13-14 win team. We can win the Super Bowl. That We're not there. We're not there yet. We're taking the right steps. We're moving the right. We're moving in the right direction. And if you remember the Eagles, the Eagles won the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. Then they had like a five-year window where they kind of treaded water. They rebuilt their roster, and then boom! All of a sudden, they became a Super Bowl, uh, a team that went to the Super Bowl, and, and, a, and a very good team in the NFL. So I feel like we're kind of in that world where we're kind of we're coming off of the Drew Brees end. You know, where Brees won 13 games in the 12 games to finish his career. We're treading water. We're rebuilding the roster a little bit. We're getting better at spots. We're trimming some of the fat. We're doing all that. And then hopefully, if all this keeps working, we find ourselves back at the top of the NFC. You know, so you do have to kind of keep things in like a realistic expectation while being honest with yourself about what's happening in the front office and on the field. You know, the Saints... You know, competing with the with the Falcons, the Bucks, and you know the whatever the Panthers can muster this year, it's winnable. So I I, I don't think you have to win the off season to be competing in the NFC South. The Saints yeah, should agreed. should very much be in that mix. And this isn't relevant yeah. to their off season grade, but like Derek Carr in the second half of the season was a lot better than Derek Carr in the first half of the season. If it just yeah. took him half a year to kind of get you know familiar with the offense and the system and the the the, the supported system, the players around him, and all those kinds of things. Like if you're getting the second half of Derek Carr going forward. You're a better team than you were last year. Yeah, it's a yeah, really good point. Agreed. And I, I, sometimes season splits, you don't like to look into those too much. But if it's a player in a new system and a new environment, maybe there is some signal there and reason for optimism there for the Saints. I say this, you know, I, look, I like PFF. Okay, they need to send me some of their merch. I'm not going to lie to anybody here with as much PR as I give the, as, as I give these guys, but I like PFF. Something you need to note about the, the where we're moving forward in football, I've talked about this before. Right now, two offensive coordinators, very heralded offensive coordinators, Bobby Slowick and Zach Robinson, they worked at PFF. They worked there. They, they didn't do guest spots. They cut their check at PFF. They put in 40 hours a week at PFF. They were in WebEx and Microsoft Teams calls breaking down data at this company right here, at PFF. So... The way that PFF and Sumer Sports and Right Angle Sports and these like analytical groups and all that, you do have to take what they're saying and you have to you have to kind of say, okay, I'm I'm going to err towards believing that they are correct with their with a lot of their rankings and analysis and their scores or whatever. Like if I, you know, if you if you think a lineman is great and PFF gives them a 55 grade, you might want to rethink. You know, how you look at that lineman. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're always right or that they're always spot on, but in today's day and age, you need to look at a consensus of what those groups, whether it's Vegas betting groups, like right angle sports, whether it's analytical groups like Sumer Sports and PFF, whether it's independent analytical people like uh, the Cowboy, I'm, I'm forgetting his name now on Twitter, uh, what is his name? It's something, something cowboy or uh, patent analytics. Like whether it's those groups, that is where the answers are in today's NFL, the way it's played. Will it change in five years, 10 years? Possibly. But you need to listen to these cats way more than whatever Darren Orlovsky, Chase Daniel, Phil Sims, Boomer Esiason, uh, te- uh, you know, Terry Bradshaw, whatever they're saying. So a little word to the wise there from your boy. Ladies and gentlemen, get on down in the comments below. Let me know what your grade for the Saints offseason would be. Thank you to PFF for providing this good stuff. I will see you in the next video.